You entered politics at a time when there were no women to be found. There was no template, no example as to how to go about this. Um, how did you chart a path that you had never seen before? For me, I came in and then I was given the, that first position ever, assistant minister in the government. The country wondered, can a woman sit with a man? Can a little girl like this one reason in front of elders? And there were a lot of elderly members of parliament at that time. Honorable well, James Gichuru, for instance, the Minister for Defense, Mbio Koinange, Minister of State in the Office of the President, Ronald Ngala. There were so many elderly persons. And then you had the younger parliamentarians, the crop of Martin Shukuku, who says, No woman in front of me. Who brought you here? I should be seeing you back. Where did you leave your husband? You know, those kind of comments. And there are uh, hardly four of us, eh? myself and uh, Niva Mwendo and Grace Onyango, who then, for us, we were lucky to, fire, to have found her there, strong, when she was a deputy speaker. And to see her sitting in front and commanding this man to sit down or something. <laughs> that also uh, gave us an uh, impetus. You know, you've mentioned some iconic political figures, people many of us have only seen in newspaper cuttings or history books. Um, and, and these are people that you rubbed shoulders with, people who mentored you. How was politics back then? How different was it compared to the politics of today? It was no easier. It was worse than it is today. Because today, you know, you... you you can uh, talk about politics in terms of, of development. There it was politics of war, because we had uh, ourselves come out of the politics of grabbing our independence. And it we ha had to. It was war, it was blood, to get it from our colonial leaders. And that was the picture around uh, Easter. Uh, in Central Africa. Oftentimes it's so hard to separate one's identity from politics, you know, considering that it's such a big, powerful, influential platform and you've been in it for so long. And then when you leave, many people find it so hard to cope, but you've managed to find other areas, other spheres to get into and be influential. How did you do that and why is it important for one to reinvent themselves after politics? For us, most of us in Kenya, we think that when you reach parliament, you really have reached the top of it. Thereafter, have nothing. There's a lot we do thereafter. You've learned to legislate. What beyond the legislation? The nation doesn't end with the legislation. It ends with the translation of that into laws, into policies, into activities, into programs of our people, the implementation of it. So when you finish, you go back and join that level. Again, and it's a very active level, very honorable level, very advanced level in its own in way. Um, where service really wanted, uh, needed now in a bigger, uh, bigger degree.